Hey guys, I'm Luke Williams. I'm the director of our performance programs uh, here at Architect Sports. Um, I've been working with athletes for over 10 years on their speed, their strength, and their overall athletic development. I've worked with athletes um, as young as seven and eight year olds all the way up to the professional level. And so we typically see very similar attributes, whether it be we're working with an eight or nine year old or working with a professional athlete. And throughout the years of gathering that data, working with, that, working with those athletes, observing them as they move, we've kind of boiled down, to, it usually comes to three kind of common factors um, that are hindering their speed development. So that's what I'm gonna to talk to you about today and kind of lay out those three factors um, to see if that's something that you can be um, working on or is that something that will, be, will help you get faster um, when it comes to your specific sport. So the first thing is the fact that speed is a skill. So a lot of people don't realize that, that speed is something that you can actually improve on. Just like any skill or any talent that you wanna get better at, the same, same goes for speed. So you can always get faster, you can always get quicker, you can improve your speed because it's a skill that you can work on. So the way that we typically do that is we do drills and exercises that specifically focus on getting you faster. Um, so just like if you were a soccer player and you wanted to become a better striker, you would go out to the field, you would shoot balls on goal, and it would be a game-like situation. If you would want to be um, you know, a better goal scorer in a game, you would do drills and you would kick the ball just like you would be if it was in a you know, game-like situation. Same goes for speed. We want to do all the drills and exercises that we run you through to increase your speed would be at that max capacity. So you can't do a speed drill and go 70% or 80%. You can do that drill and you go you know, 95 to 100%, so you know, just under submax or maximum effort. Um, and you do that over a number of times and you do it with enough repetition and you will slowly but surely increase your speed and quickness. Um, so that's the speed is a skill. So people don't always you know, realize that, that they can actually, if they have focused um, and specific work, they can improve you know, their, their skill, which is speed, and it will make them faster. Uh, the second one is poor running technique. So there's almost always when we get a kid in, there's at least one or two, if not more things we can fix when it comes to their sprint mechanics and their running technique. Um, there's three of the most common areas when it comes to running technique. The first one is their foot contact to the ground. So how are they contacting the ground with their foot every time they take a step, with every stride? Um, and the biggest, the big common mistake we see on that is that they either heel strike or they're flat footed when they're trying to sprint. So when they're accelerating out or when they're in their full sprint, they're running flat footed on the ground or they're hitting their heel first and pulling themselves through. Um, and so that increases ground contact time. So it makes your stride slower. Um, and then it also, it, so that in turn will make you slower. And then it'll also could potentially cause some other in injuries or issues whether it be heel pain, whether it be ankle pain, um, or just things that are kind of go up the, the chain link right there, because you're, you're pounding on that heel so much every time you take a step, which it's not made for that, right? You're made when you're sprinting to hit on the ball of your foot and then to drive off of that, and they'll make, like I said, that ground contact time will be much quicker, um, and you'll be able to get more strides in and a faster rate, which will then increase your speed. Um, the second thing for, for uh, running form is uh, posture. Okay, so um, when you're running, and when, say when we're accelerating, okay, the first you know, 10 to 15 yards of our sprint and we're accelerating, you know, are you leaning into it properly or are you popping straight up? Okay? And same thing, if you're leaning into it, are you leaning into it but then you're rounding your shoulders over? Okay? So both of those factors will then hinder the rest of your movement. So if you're bending over too much in your movement, you can't get a proper knee drive out of it, which will then hinder your power and into your acceleration. Um, if you're popping up too fast and you don't have a proper lean, okay, you're, you're taking that drive phase out of your acceleration. So you're not able to get that power in that initial start and that initial run of your, of your sprint and you end up losing the power and you pop straight up. Okay, so you, you're taking that away. So there's a few things you know, there from a postural standpoint that we can fix that will help even without getting you, even without doing a lot of drills or getting you stronger, Okay, will instantly fix the way that you move, will help, which will help increase your speed. Um, and the last thing is arm swing, um, is too much excess movement. So how much are you moving your arms? Are you moving them side to side? Are you moving them, are you just doing a little bit? Are you doing it too much? Okay, so that excess movement is just a lot of wasted energy, wasted movement. Um, so it's not helping you. Any movement that you're doing that's not helping you 
you know, whether you're going linear or you're going side to side, whatever you're doing with your arms, if that's not helping you increase your speed, then it just ends up being wasted movement, wasted energy, okay? So that arm swing um, can be crucial too because that can really help generate a lot of power from your upper body and that way you don't have to just depend on your lower body to generate that power and, and that explosiveness to get into your speed, okay? So <clears throat> having those three things, fixing those three factors in the running form can be, can be a huge, you know, step forward and getting you faster. All right, and the third thing is the lack of strength and power. So the first two, the first two factors that we talked about with the arm swing and then just knowing that speed is a skill, those things are great to start working on. Um, but then this third factor, um, if we don't tackle this um, factor in gaining strength and power, those first two can only take you so far, okay? We can fix some mechanical issues and some technique issues. We can kind of teach you how to increase your speed, but then yet this, you're, you're gonna reach a point where we're gonna need to also increase your strength and your power, and so, so your speed can continue um, to increase. Um, because if, you know, the way that you get faster is that you put more force into the ground to propel yourself forward. And so if you're not able to, or maybe don't understand how to create more force and put more force into the ground to propel you forward into that sprint, then obviously you're not gonna be able to increase your speed. And so that just means gaining strength. So we gotta get you stronger in some way um, and we gotta increase your power. So part of that is just getting you to understand how to produce power. So you might have the strength already, but you just don't fully understand from a coordination standpoint or from a mental standpoint, how to actually be explosive in your movements, be explosive in your steps or in your start or with every stride that you're doing. Um, so part of that is just the repetition of doing different drills that will really hone in on that specific skill of how to be explosive, how to be powerful, and how to increase your, your power you know, while you're sprinting. And then part of that is just gaining strength. Right? So you can understand how to do, how to be powerful and how to, how to increase your explosive movements. But then if you're not strong enough to create that power, then obviously you won't be able to be as powerful and as fast as you could be. So we got to also work on your strength. And then when I say work on our strength and get stronger, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to go lift weights. Okay. So there's certainly, um, a weight aspect in that and depending on where you are in, in you know, age and development and all those different things, we can, you know, we can put you through a weight program, which will certainly help you, you know, increase strength and power. But that also, there's lots of other ways that you can increase your strength and power without using weights too. Um, so especially for our younger kids, um, there's, you know, things like plyometrics. So a lot of different jumps and explosive type movements like a broad jump or a vertical jump or a squat jump. Um, that's something that you do those over a number of times and progress those forward. You'll increase your strength, your lower body strength, and then also increase you know, your power development, um, core strength, core strength and hip strength. You can do lots of different exercises with just your body weight, you know, your body weight as your weight. So different things like planks and side planks, um, and hip bridges and things like that, that will really strengthen the core and the hip area that will help in things like the posture that we talked about in running form, right? So if you can't, if you don't have a strong core, you won't be able to hold the posture that we want you to hold. Um, if you don't have strong hips, you won't be able to drive your foot to the ground and get your hips extended through to get that full stride. Okay. And then also just like, like what I'm talking about right now is you won't be able to have that full amount of power that you should have to be able to increase your speed. Okay. So, so gaining strength and power is kind of that third factor, or maybe I should say lack of strength and power is kind of that third factor that we see in a lot of athletes especially on the younger side, but we even see that in the college and, and professional, you know, high school, college and professional world too. Um, you know, they might be strong athletes in general, but they might not have that specific strength to be able to really increase their speed um, and they're not using it efficiently to be able to increase their speed from there. So, um, so overall kind of in conclusion, you know, those are the three factors that we've identified is that lack of strength and power, the, the poor running form and, and technique, as well as just the understanding that speed is a skill and it can be trained and improved, um, you know, whenever you focus on it specifically. So to get more information on how to improve that and, or to learn more of, about different ways that, you, that we can help you improve your speed, um, go ahead and put your email in the form below um, and we can send you some more information on different programs that we offer. But one of the biggest things that we can tell you about is a, we're doing a three-day uh, Fundamentals of Speed clinic 
um, that will address these three main issues we talked about, as well as several other areas that we feel like are really important when it comes to young athletes increasing and developing their speed. So be sure to put your info um, in that below, and that way we'll send you all everything you need to know to be able to get signed up for that, um, and also just to learn more about how you can help your athlete um, get faster and stronger. Thanks.